But now we are looking into the color blue, we will also look into a potential fraudulent experiment. Wait a minute, this doesn't look right. Until the Egyptians come up with what we today call Egyptian blue 4,500 years ago, no civilization had a name for the color blue. Berlin and Kay detected that the name for the color blue was always introduced later than most other color names across all different languages. They came up with a color hierarchy with which you could predict the introduction order of color names. All languages has black or dark and white or light. If a language only has three color references, the third color will always be red. The hierarchy has seven stages, and blue is on stage five. Scientists and linguists have studied color names for over a hundred years, and one color specifically has stood out, the color blue. Already in 1858, William Gladstone found it very odd that Homer described the sea as wine dark. Why not blue? Gladstone then counted all the color references in the Odyssey and found that blue was never mentioned. Now, this has led to a few misunderstandings on the internet. The Greeks did have a word for blue. In fact, they had several. Homer's Odyssey was written about 1500 years after the Egyptians created the Egyptian blue, which was a very popular color in Greece, by the way. German linguist Lazarus Geiger noticed that Gladstone's findings was true across all cultures from Icelandic sagas to ancient Chinese texts. Blue seemed to have been missing everywhere. Well, modern science has proven that the Vikings who founded Iceland indeed had a word for blue, blar. It was used to describe both black and blue. To make it a bit more confusing, they also had a word for black, svarter. Geiger wrote this about old Hindu hymns. There is one thing no one would ever learn from these ancient songs, and that is that the sky is blue. Now, this has been said about many ancient cultures, that they didn't describe the sky as blue. My own personal opinion is that it could be considered as odd to describe the sky as blue, when it has so many different colors during the day. In the morning it vibrates with yellow and purple. In the day, depending on the weather, it's grey, white or blue. In the evening it's red and pink, and at night it's black. There is a story about a Namibian tribe, the Himba, that can't separate green from blue, but effortlessly differentiates between several shades of green which would look the same to us. The story has been featured on big platforms like the New York Times and the BBC, and is still frequently referenced in popular science articles on the internet. It describes an experiment that demonstrates hard evidence for the relativistic view that language affects how we perceive the world. In the experiment, tribe members are presented with 12 colored squares. 11 are green, and one is blue. They are then asked to find the odd one out, the blue one. Here's how the podcast Radio Lab describes the experiment. He sat down with a bunch of members of the Himba tribe, whipped out a laptop, and showed them 12 colored squares. All identical except for one. And there's actually some really cool video footage of his research assistant doing this. And he asked them, very simply, which one is different? Now, you look at this and you see that 11 of these squares are green. A color we would call green. Very green. The other one is blue. It's easy enough for us to do. It's a no-brainer. But the Himba, who don't have a separate word for blue in their language... They, they find the, this distinction a little difficult. When they stare at this screen, they just stare and stare. They don't see the difference between the blue and the green? It. No. This is how Kevin Loria from Business Insider Australia describes the experiment. When shown a circle with 11 green squares and one blue, they could not pick out which one was different from the others. Or those who could see a difference took much longer and made more mistakes than would make sense to us. 
who can clearly spot the blue square. This was of course amazing results, and people wanted to read more about the experiment. There was just one problem. There was nothing published and no documentation about the experiment. When Steve Ma started asking people involved with researching the Himba, he got a different version of the story. I'm not aware of any finding, and certainly none with the Himba, where a participant has failed to spot an oddball. Jules asked me to set up a demonstration for the BBC. The color work is not actually my work, it's mostly Debbie Robertson's. Linguist Mark Lieberman sums it up quite nicely. The BBC's presentation of the mocked up experiment was apparently a journalistic fabrication, created by the documentary's editors after the fact, and was never asserted by the researchers themselves, much less demonstrated experimentally. And yet the story keeps on being published year after year. Let's see if my opinion can help stop this. Please let me know what I got wrong in this episode. Give me a comment, write me an email. Oh, and give us a like and subscribe, you know, if you like.